Unit 9.1, Prismatic Beam Design. In this unit, we will focus on the following course outcome. Demonstrate the ability to calculate normal and shear stress and deflection in beams. In this lesson, we will focus on demonstrating the ability to design and analyze prismatic beams. In this lesson, we will discuss how to use our knowledge of normal stress and shear stress in beams in beam design. First of all, let's define what a prismatic beam is. A prismatic beam is a beam with a constant cross-section along its entire length. That means the cross-section and the section properties do not change. This also applies to the material properties along the length of the beam. They are also constant. And we're going to consider three types of sections. Steel sections, wood sections, and built-up sections. Before we do, let's discuss a new section property called the section modulus. Here's the equation for the maximum normal stress at a cross-section in a beam. When we are designing a beam, we will set the maximum stress equal to our allowable stress. That's the stress that we will not allow the beam to exceed. And that will be equal to the maximum moment in the beam times C over I. In design, we typically know the material that we are going to be using, so therefore we know our allowable normal stress. We know the loads and the geometry of the member, so we know what the max moment is. But the variables C and I are typically unknown. They are the design variables. If you recall, I is the moment of inertia of the cross-section, and C is the vertical distance on the cross-section from the neutral axis to the point furthest from the neutral axis, also called the extreme fiber. We can define section modulus as the ratio of the moment of inertia divided by the distance c. Now we can substitute section modulus into the equation above, and we get that the allowable stress is equal to the maximum moment divided by the section modulus. And we can rewrite this to solve for the required section modulus. That's equal to the maximum moment in the beam divided by the allowable stress of the beam material. So we have two ways of looking at section modulus. Section modulus is equal to the moment of inertia divided by the value C. The required section modulus is equal to the maximum moment divided by the allowable stress. This will be a value we will know for the member we are designing. Now let's talk about steel sections. There are many standard shapes that can be used in the design of beam members. A common one is an I-shaped member. This is called a W shape. It's called W because it is a wide flange section. The flanges are these two horizontal elements. The vertical element is called the web. Another common section is a C-shape or channel section. It's given its name because of its shape. Numerous other shapes exist such as square tubes, circular tubes, angles, and so forth. The geometric properties of standard shapes can be found in tables like this. This is a table taken from Mechanics of Materials textbook. Other tables can be found from manufacturers that are selling shapes of various materials. They can also be found in the literature of professional societies and organizations. This particular table is for wide flange sections, or W shapes. These were the I-shaped sections we considered a few moments ago. First of all, let's look at the first column on the left. This is the designation column where the shapes are given a name. And you can see for the names of these shapes, they all begin with W. That's to identify them as W shapes. The value next to the W represents the nominal depth in inches of the member. You can see, for example, in this first group of shapes, they all begin with a W24. And if we look at the depth value, uh, the depths are all about 24 inches. Looking at the cross section, here is the depth shown in red. That is the vertical dimension of the section. The second number in the designation is the member weight in pounds per foot. This means that if you took a beam of the given section and cut off a one foot length 
it would weigh, for example, the W24 by 104, it would weigh 104 pounds. Also in the table, we find the properties of the cross-section, such as the cross-sectional area, the actual depth, the thickness of the web, and the width and thickness of the flanges. The flanges in a W shape are both identical. Some additional properties are moment of inertia, section modulus, and radius of gyration. Notice that there are values for these three properties about two axes. The xx axis is often called the strong axis. The yy axis, which is shown here as the vertical axis, is called the weak axis. We get greater resistance to bending about the xx or strong axis. That's because the flanges result in a lot of material being far from the neutral axis. So that increases the moment of inertia. Bending about the yy axis or weak axis results in less resistance. We can see in the table that for a given shape, such as the W24 by 104 at the top, the moment of inertia about the strong axis is considerably larger than the moment of inertia about the yy axis. And this is true for all the shapes. Now let's focus on the section modulus. This is the property that we discussed a few moments ago. The section modulus is calculated as the moment of inertia divided by c. For the shapes shown, c is just equal to half the depth. So you could calculate the section modulus by taking the moment of inertia, shown here, and dividing it by half the depth. So how do we use the section modulus to design a beam? We're going to use the relationship shown, which is that the section modulus for a section selected from the table must be greater than the required section modulus. The required section modulus is equal to the maximum moment divided by the allowable stress. So we can pick from the table a section with a section modulus value bigger than our required section modulus and we will know that the allowable st stress in the member will not be exceeded when the maximum moment is applied. And this is how we design the beam for bending. For most beams which are long and slender, the controlling stress is the bending stress or flexure stress. But it is wise to always check that the shear capacity of the cross section is met. For shorter beams, sometimes the shear stress controls. To check the shear capacity, we will use the following relationship, which is that the maximum shear stress in the beam will be less than or equal to the allowable shear stress. Typically, we use the equation VQ over IT to calculate maximum shear stress. However, for wide flange sections, we can simplify the VQ over IT equation as shown. We can calculate approximate maximum stress is equal to the maximum shear force divided by the area of the web. Here's the area shown in red. That area is equal to the depth of the member D times the web thickness, T sub W. Now let's talk about wood sections. Common wood sections for North America are shown here. The designations given to wood sections use the nominal dimensions for example, a 2x4. Now it turns out that a 2x4, uh, which represents 2 inches by 4 inches, is the nominal shape. The actual shape is actually less. In fact, if we see here on the table, a 2x4 actually has dimensions of 1.5 inches by 3.5 inches. The 2x4 represents the rough cut dimensions, and the actual dimensions are the finished dimensions. So it can be a little bit confusing. Typically, the actual dimensions are about one half inch less than the nominal dimensions. However, for dimensions eight inches and larger, the actual dimensions are typically about three quarters inches less than the nominal. When designing wood sections, we will use the section modulus. And as before, the section modulus of the section chosen must be greater than the required section modulus. The section modulus of a board can be calculated using this equation, I over C. Since boards are typically rectangular in shape, I, the moment of inertia, can be written as BH cubed over 12. And C is half the height, 
which is h over 2. And this can simplify to bh squared over 6. So this is the section modulus of a rectangular shaped section. As before, we will also check shear. And the maximum shear stress must be less than the allowable shear stress. We can use for the equation for maximum shear stress vq over it. For a rectangular shape, q is equal to a prime times y bar prime. a prime is the area shown here in red. Since we're calculating maximum shear stress, that'll be right on the neutral axis. So our area is the area above or below, if we wanted, the neutral axis. So a prime is equal to half the height times the base. That's shown here in these two terms. y bar prime is also shown. That's the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of a prime, which is 1 quarter the height. In the VQ over IT equation, the moment of inertia is BH cubed over 12 for a rectangle, and T is the base dimension here, B. And this reduces to the convenient form 1.5 times the internal shear force, V, divided by B times H. And B times H is just the cross-sectional area. So this expression, 1.5 times shear divided by area, is the equation for maximum shear stress in a rectangular cross-section. The final type of sections we'll consider are built-up sections. And built-up sections can be made of steel, such as these steel plate girders, or wood, such as this box beam or this glue lamp beam, or any other material. Built-up sections are typically unique sections that are used when common sections will simply not work. And they can be made of metal plates, as shown here on the left, that are either welded or bolted together, or boards that are nailed together or glued. In built-up sections, we will check the bending stress, and we can do this by using the section modulus. We will check shear stress, and we will also need to check shear flow at the joints. In unit 6.4, we discussed how to calculate shear flow in built-up beams. And we're done.